Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel, my name is Marina and this is a follow-up video to my previous video regarding the word search puzzle generators. Some of you purchased Puzzle Maker Pro, the one I suggested, and now you have a lot of questions, how, where and what is each button doing. Now I already made video about this software, so this video is going to focus on answering your questions. So I have a list, list here of your questions and I'm going to answer all your questions. For those of you who are watching this video and you did not purchase this tool, that's, that is why I am uh, starting this video with the price. This is the price for Puzzle Maker Pro Standard Word Search Bundle. So there is no point of purchasing um, lower versions of this software. This bundle, number one, is the one that is going to give you everything that you need to create books uh, with word search puzzles. And the, the puzzles are also can be masked versions, so you can use images to create word search puzzles. So that is 147 United States dollars plus minus taxes depending on your local currency so i paid substantially more than this price that you see on the screen because i have double taxes in my country so that is why uh, i'm showing you the price if this is out of your budget so you can skip this video you can use this software full commercial rights on puzzles you create you can sell them on fiverr creative fabrica you can give them for free the same the thing that I'm doing, in most cases, I am uh, creating word search uh, bundles and I'm uh, giving them for free or I include them as a bonus files in my other uh, products. So you have no restrictions. And this is only for Windows, so PC computers, and this is a downloadable software, so it works on your computer. Before I start the video, I'm going to emphasize that in the upper right corner, of this video that you're going to watch there is going to be a dark blue square with a white number if you have any question regarding the slide that is going to be on your screen there will be a number in the upper right corner so if you have some question regarding that particular slide that particular part of the menu write down down in below in the comments that number and what is your question so it is for easier for me to give you a better answer so number in the right corner write down in the comments uh, what is your question so i have the questions i received here next to me and before i start the video if you are a member of the luke baus kdp facebook group he is going to very soon release the word list generator so it is a generator of word lists for word search puzzles at the moment it is still not available to purchase but he is running a giveaway giveaway on his facebook group where three lucky winners are going to get free lifetime access to this word list generator it is going to close at 5 pm uk time hopefully i'm going to manage to post this video a couple of hours before that time so if you are not a member of the group you can go there all you have to do to participate you need to post one name of your favorite type of logic puzzle so it can be kakuro it can be sudoku it can be word search puzzle whatever is your favorite logic puzzle just post that under this post so not just any any post under this post this post is going to be linked down below and you have a chance to win a free lifetime access to word list generator so that is something that you could stop the video and automatically go there to do that and then come back to continue watching this video so this is how the BPT Puzzle Maker Pro is going to look like once you open it for the first time. Once you open it for the first time, you need to register your uh, email that you use to purchase the software. And then it's going to give you a list of all puzzle types that you have licensed. You can still demo and try all the other puzzles that are available. So if the puzzle has demo in brackets, that means you did not purchase license for it. If it has license in the back in the brackets that means you purchased license for it and you can use it i purchased standard word search bundle one and that gives me ability to create fixed grid puzzles 
uh, use mask to create shaped word search puzzles and also I can change the grids and I, ch I can create multiple books at the same time. That gives me the time saver option. So I'm going to answer the first question here, how to set up the word search puzzle, the fixed grid. So I would call that rectangle, where you have a fixed amount of rows and fixed amount of columns. So the red number here is how many rows you're going to have in your grid. And the blue number indicates how many columns you're going to have in your grid. Then on the bottom, the first thing that you have, the first menu is puzzle menu where you can select complexity there is also advanced complexity beyond this one here but this would be the first one for you to set so you have two options you can have without checking diagonal and backwards if you do that then you're only going to have words inside uh, using normal directions so that is from left to right and from up to down if you click diagonal it is going to place words inside the puzzle in diagonal direction. If you select backwards, so all those directions also moving backwards. So down, up, right to left, and from bottom right to the upper top left. So that would be this uh, complexity section here. When it comes to word list, you can add word list by typing it in, copy pasting it, or you can import text file with your words and each word needs to be in the new row so you cannot have uh, words in one line they all need to be in the new row inside that file next uh, section here on the top is where you can select quantity how many puzzles and this is also important thing not to rem not to forget use words only once what if you click here what is going to happen so that is the next question what happens if i click here if you click here and you provide a list with 100 words and for example you set that the minimum minimum amount of words is 20 it is going to generate five puzzles five times 20 is 100 words so in those five puzzles no word is going to repeat so each puzzle all five puzzles it's going to have 100 different words and every word is going to be used only once so that is uh, what you get if you select use words only once and then you can also set minimum amount of words so that is a minimum amount of words per puzzle so that is that section next question what are these algorithms so if you click on the tab advanced you're going to see on the top of the advanced tab four algorithm settings the first one is default default is mixture of the three other uh, algorithms what compact is doing is compact will try to cross with other words so if you have 10 20 30 words the compact algorithm is going to try to intersect them always it's going to try to force so that each word is actually intersecting with the other word if you uh, choose no shared letters that is opposite so every word is going to be completely separated by the other words on the board if it's of course possible if it's not possible then it's not going to do it it could return to you with an error there is not enough uh, letters there is not enough place on the grid so stuff like that use all words this is going to try to use all words in the list that you provided so if you provided 200 words do not use this feature this is only if you have like 10 20 30 words that you provided into the system in as your word list then you can use then you can click on use all words so what this is going to do is going to try to accommodate all the words starting with the longest one and then it's going to try to mix them all up to fit them inside this one takes longer to generate and it also depends that also you need to make sure that all words the total letter count in all words is equal or smaller than uh, the available squares in the grid so of course if you have 60 letters and you have 45 uh, room 
squares in the puzzle grid, it's not going to work. So you need to have more squares in the grid than you have total letter count for it to be able to accommodate all words from your list into the puzzle grid. Then, next question was for this section here. Unlimited words, that means that it's going to try to place as much as words as possible within the puzzle. So it's not going to uh, focus on just 10, 15 or something, some number. It's going to try to pack as much as words as it can into each puzzle. And then you have, sorry for that, then you have a lot of overlapping words. And here I'm giving you examples. So let's say we have a uh, caterpillar, and this could also be a solution for cat, pill, and of course the caterpillar. So if you select this, allow overlapping words, if one word is also included within another word that is on the list, it could be also part of a solution for that uh, word as well. So that is what's going to happen if you allow overlapping of the words. Remove spaces and remove other. In case in your list you have words with spaces, so two words but they are actually one, and you have like dash or uh, all the other signs, you can type them in here and it's going to remove them when it's placing them into the puzzle. So this is something that was confusing you. If you click remove space and you have two words like gingerbread, the gingerbread is going to show up on the word list uh, with space. So it's not going to remove space from the actual word list, but it is going to combine those letters without space inside the puzzle grid. So inside puzzle grid, gingerbread is going to be as one connected word. There will be no spaces, but in the puzzle list, that word is going to be separated. So this is not removing spaces from the word list or any other uh, character, it is removing it from the actual puzzle. If you keep this, if you do not select this, then you're going to see blank uh, puzzle grids, areas or squares, because it's going to indicate it is a space. So it's going to include spaces within the puzzle grid. And limit diagonals, this is reducing the amount of diagonals and words that are diagonals inside puzzle grid. So if you want to make a puzzle for uh, children, younger ages, and you want to make it really simple, then you could do that while, while still having some of the words in diagonal, so not just that many. So this is just forcing the program to uh, reduce the amount of diagonals. If you want to uh, completely ignore them, then you have that I mentioned at the beginning on slide number one. Let's continue. Next question regarding the solution, and this is the reason I purchased this software. Uh, I had a question on my previous video, and again I had a question now. Why this software? Why not Lugbao software? Lugbao software doesn't have at the moment mystery word. So I'm using both programs, but for one project that I was working on, I needed to have a solution that is a hidden word or mystery word. So that is why I purchased this software, plus the fact that I can use it completely free uh, with full commercial uh, rights, no restrictions. So when it comes to solution, you can have random characters. As you can see here on the left, we have uh, alphabet the entire alphabet, or you can use hidden word, you can, same as uh, word list, you can type them here, you can copy paste them, or you can import them from the text file. Same thing here, make sure that each word or even sentences, that they are separated with, uh, with that they are in each individual row. That is this section here, so under solution, that is how you pick random character or use hidden word. Next question, what options do we have when it comes to marking of the solution? So you can choose the word fill color and I would never use this, maybe if you prefer this, but I'm, I, don't, I don't know in what occasion would this be beneficial. So word fill color, you have line, also, this doesn't look in print very well, so these two left options, they do not look good in print. 
and the one that I'm using and most of the people are using is lines circle so lines circle and here on the bottom you can change the width of this uh, oval shape color of this oval shape and you can also change diameter so how far it is from the letters so that is what you can set here later once i'm finished with everything i'm going to actually show you all of this in the program itself next question was regarding the style what is style doing so this tab style it is giving you option to change font settings and under font settings once you click on the font so arial it is going to give you opportunity to change relative position of the letters within the square the reason why this is important the way ttf files and otf files so font files i'm talking about font files are sometimes created the kerning of the font is not precise it's not just created properly and in order to avoid using default settings for all fonts because that would make letters go all over the place you have this feature here where you can change the position of the font of the letters within the square and you can automatically see what is happening here on the right in this small right window you can see how the font placement letter placement is changing if you typed your word list so your word list original word list has some lowercase letters uppercase uh, letters but you want all letters inside so inside the puzzle grid to be uppercase click on this one here uppercase so this is going to force all words inside the puzzle grid all letters inside the puzzle grid to be uppercase and that is what you select here that is under font settings now i would also like to point out that everything that you do everything that you create everything that you set up you can save under presets so type the name of your preset here and click on the save button so that is this middle icon and that is going to save your preset so if after 10 20 days you want to use it again just activate your preset so make sure that once you find the settings that you like save them save them with a different name unique name so you can go back to them next thing next question was what is this section here doing so this red section is to uh, change the background color of the puzzle it can also be transparent if you want to put maybe an image in the back of the puzzle and when it comes to lines you can actually make the lines transparent so if you put the border to zero and line to zero that is actually thickness if you put it on zero you are making the lines transparent if you increase the number so 5 10 15 and change the color you're going to get the lines borderline is borderline around the puzzle and line are inside lines and for the word list option so this blue section here you have sorting options dictionary order so that is this one here the first one from the left then you have numeric order numeric order is per letter count so it go it, so it's counting the amount of letters in word and it is sorting them like that and if you click don't sort it's going to use whatever order the word appeared in your original word list that you uploaded into the system and on the right side of this blue square you have alignment of the word list within the box where the words are placed so you can align them left center or right so those are the options for the word list boxes so that is what you set here next question what are the output settings that i prefer that i would suggest i would prefer that you keep this at 3000 pixels so that's maximum of course for commercial print 300 dpi and when it comes to puzzle output format i usually pick uh, transparent png i pick transparent png not jpeg because png is a loss, uh, lossless 
file format, it gives you better quality at the same resolution. You can also choose SVG, but I'm not 100% sure is SVG included in the bundle number one. I purchased SVG for all the, all the puzzles as a separate add-on, so I'm not sure is SVG automatically included in the bundle number one, but I have it here. But this is a word search puzzle. It is not an image in such a way that needs to be an SVG. So transparent PNG is uh, perfectly fine. And here custom puzzle file name. So that is under uh, the puzzle size. This is where you select uh, the numerical value that when it starts generating the puzzles, what is going to be the first uh, number that is going to use for the file name. Uh, here in the upper left corner of this red uh, section, you have skip puzzle creation. What is that? W why do we have that? The skip puzzle creation is if you're going to use option to export puzzles as PDF and as PowerPoint, then there is absolutely no need for you to generate. It is just going to clock your uh, system unnecessarily because puzzle creation, what is actually doing, it is creating an image and a text file with the words used in that puzzle image. So if you're going to export as PDF or uh, as a PowerPoint, there is no need for you to use this puzzle file section. So you can click on skip puzzle creation. So it's still going to generate a PowerPoint file or PDF file or both. It is just not going to generate another folder with all the puzzles separate as PNG file and as text file for the words. And here on the bottom, this is something that I wish it would change. Uh, this, if you purchase this software, you can join the specific Facebook group for this software. And then you can uh, ask for some changes and upgrades and improvements. And one thing I asked is for this to be removed. So there is at the moment, there is no way that uh, the file that you get, so the output images that you get, so they do not have a date included. So they all have a date and then puzzle one, date, puzzle two, date, solution one, date, solution three. I wish I could avoid that, but that is at the moment uh, one of these two options. You cannot uh, remove the date from the uh, puzzle name, file name. Next one is instant puzzle books. So this is something that you get with time saver. You do not have this option if you have, uh, if you do not have time saver. And honestly, uh, without time saver, I would not recommend you getting this software. If you're going to purchase this software, get it with time saver. It, it makes no point getting this without time saver. So with this instant puzzle books under output type, you can select JPEG with text word list. That is what I mentioned before. PNG with text word list. So it's not going to generate a PNG image where you're going to have within the image itself puzzle and the list on the bottom. It doesn't generate those kind of images. So it's going to be puzzle as a puzzle grid. And then you're going to have a text file for the words used in that puzzle grid. So that is also something that was confusing people. So you, when you select JPEG or PNG, it is not generating a JPEG of puzzle and words, word lists. It's not like that. It's creating a JPEG of the puzzle grid or PNG of the puzzle grid and word lists are separate from that image. So that's the reason why for me, the only logical option is either PowerPoint or PDF. So PowerPoint is going to generate one slide with image, puzzle image and word list or PDF, same thing. I'm going to have an image of the puzzle and on the bottom or wherever I selected to place the word list, I'm going to have word list. So when it comes to output, the only two that I would recommend is either PowerPoint or PDF. That's it. If uh, maybe, for example, if you want to create the books in Canva, okay, so I'm, I'm thinking right now, I'm trying to find 
uh, more questions that you would probably ask that you didn't ask now. So if you want to import the puzzle into Canva, you could use JPEG and PNG, import them to Canva and then use text file of the words to add words on the individual page. I, that's too complicated for me because I have PowerPoint, but I, from what I can say, uh, from, what, from what I can see, not everybody is using PowerPoint, not everybody has PowerPoint. So in that case, you could also try with PDF uh, export and then import PDF into Canva. So that's also an option to create uh, puzzles and also edit them quickly inside Canva, if the Canva is your preferred tool. If you click on the page format, so that's the next tab, you're going to be able to select dimensions of the book and that is only valid for PowerPoint and PDF file. And you can also set margins here. And once again, you can see this preset tab here. So you can maybe name this US letter A4 so you can actually save presets for future use. And then next tab is titles setup. So title setup is where you can, uh, so that is going to be the words that is going to appear above the images inside PowerPoint and inside PDF. So it's going to be puzzle one, puzzle two, solution one, solution two. That is going to be that uh, title placeholder above each puzzle and above each solution. And on the bottom here where you see this red uh, sliders, this is where you can change the height between the puzzle and the title and change the height between the solution image and title. So that is what these two sliders are doing. And also you can set the font of the titles as well here. So that is what you have on this section. And now everything that I'm going to talk about next is only with time saver. So if you did not get time saver, you're not going to have this option. So page layout with the time saver, you have op opportunity to set that first puzzles and then solutions. And that is logical when you're making a book. First, you have all the puzzles and then you have all the solutions. This layout is only possible if you have time saver. So that's the reason why I said it is pointless to purchase this software without time saver. So time saver gives you this B uh, layout option where you can put puzzles first, solution uh, at the end of the book. And now if you have time saver, you can click on B. And once you click on B, then you have option to change how many puzzles per page. So how many rows and how many columns and on solution layout, how many solution images in a row in a column. And in the bottom, you see that you have a row padding in inches. Once again, you have red sliders. This is how much space it's going to be between two puzzles or two solutions when it comes to rows and it comes to columns. So that is where you set the distance between two images. Under page layout, under word search layouts, you also have these eight options for where the puzzle is going to be in relation to the word list. So most of the time we are using number one and sometimes number three or five. So one, three and five are most commonly used. And then once again, here on the bottom, you have red sliders. The first red slider is changing the ratio between the puzzle and list. So that means you can make puzzle smaller, word list larger, or in most cases, you're going to do the opposite, make puzzle larger and word list smaller on piece of paper. Here on the right, you can select how many word columns. So if you already know that the amount of words per one puzzle is high, you need to click here a couple of columns. So three, four, five. So it, ha it splits them into multiple columns. So more words can fit on one page. If you select one or two, it's not going to, uh, it's going to go overboard. So if you select uh, one column 
and you have like 30 words the it's going to be one column but most of the words are going to go beyond visible part of the image so visible part of the slide or visible part of the pdf so depending on how many words you have per puzzle select one two three four five word columns and same here uh, as before you have row padding and column padding sliders where you can adjust the distance between each row within the word list and each column between the column of the word lists i believe i have sample here for that yes so here see on the left we have abacus cat dog and this is very close to one another if you want to split them so if you want to make uh, more dist uh, distance between each row you can do this and this on the right is column padding so you can see if you have long words it is better to have uh, larger column padding so they do not overlap on top of each other okay next question this one is this one confused me this one confused me i had no idea where to set this and i actually had to ask hans because i was completely going bananas i could not get my powerpoint puzzle to align properly and it is actually under the time saver under the main tab this is where you can set the alignment of the puzzle within the powerpoint file or within the pdf file and also make sure that your first column, first column where the word list are, is actually aligned with the puzzle itself. So that is that you get here. And I, I tried all the settings, but I had no idea this is an additional setting under the time saver that is uh, actually aligning the puzzle with the word list so that is here so that is this is where you uh, can play around with the alignment of the puzzle and the word lists okay um, i'm not going to go into bulk creation because that's going to make video too long i'm now focusing only on creating one book if you want to create batch amount of books the procedure is the same you just need to after you make all the setups you need to save them and import them into batch creation and then make another one another one another one and once you have a couple of presets with different words different setups then you go to the batch creation click enter and let it run let it create multiple projects so i'm not going to go into that in this video because i didn't receive any questions regarding that if you want to know more about batch creation ask me uh, down below in the comments or send me your questions but right now we're just going to focus on creating one book at a time the, the last tab in the menu after time saver is tools and this one is very very important at the beginning I wasted a couple of hours because I did not know this was checked. So if you forget, like me, to change the output folder, so you create one book and you are counting, okay, it's done. You have everything in the folder and then you change the settings and then you click on create again. And if you have this checked here, what is actually going to do, it is going to overwrite the data inside the folder with the new puzzles so if you cannot remember to change the name of the output folder between each creations of the puzzles make sure that you uncheck this so if you uncheck this it's going to create another folder within that main folder so it's going to merge all the files together it's not going to delete them and then uh, write over them so make sure this here where it says clear project folder before create make sure this is unchecked or keep it but make sure that you always save or rename the output folder and on the bottom of the tools you have save window position so once the program menu interface opens if you click here it's going to memorize that position and it's always going to open that in that position you can disable auto preview when you change something on uh, on the puzzle uh, itself 
you can sh uh, deselect to show confirmation pop-ups. So once the puzzle generation is finished, it's going to create a pop-up telling you that it's over. If you do not want that, uh, uncheck this. And also, if you do not want that it's opening PDF and PowerPoint file after it is created, you can uncheck that here as well. And now, this is uh, a mask option. So under that was fixed grid under use mask option. Once you click on set mask, it's going to open this window here. And now I believe it is a great moment for me to switch to actual software. So now I'm going to switch to actual software. So this is let me place it here. So let's fix this. So let's start with the rows. So let's set eight, eight. So row eight, that is what I told you and click on next preview. And now I have eight rows, eight columns under puzzle. I can, you see now everything is straight. I'm going to click diagonal and next preview. And now you see I have diagonal, but look at the words KDP, Kiwi, dog, cat, Holland, space. They are all in that direction I showed you before. And now I'm going to click backwards. So let's see what's going to happen when I have backwards activated. And let's see, do we have Kiwi, cat, you see dog, banana. Okay, it didn't create anything backwards. Cat, Kiwi, pizza. Okay, Holland is now backwards. You see Holland is now backwards. KDP is backwards. So that is when I have backwards activated, it's going to also put words in backwards. And I'm going to go to advance and I'm going to click on compact so you can see what's going to happen with compact. You see with compact, it is forcing that as much as, as it possible, words intersect with one another. So that is compact. Let's go back to default. Next preview. Okay. Oh, you also have here kids diagonal. So from top left to bottom right. So you can also have this section here. And this is also very good if you are creating children's book that uh, it is uh, filtering uh, the words. So you can always also do that as well here. Let's go to solution tab random characters. I'm going to use word fill so you can see how that looks like. So this is the word fill. I would not recommend this for print for books because you cannot see the words at all. So I'm going to click on use lines. This is a circle here. You can change the width. Next preview. You can also type next preview and line is that straight line in the middle. So to me, circle is the best. And I, let me just change the diameter here. Let's go very small. You see now it's practically nothing. And if I go overboard, you see it goes overboard. So somewhere around, I believe 117, 113, it's optimal. Yes. And let's make it 15. So yeah, this is optimal. And now what I want to do is I want to change. I don't know. Can you see, but you see the oh, let's focus on letter F. You see letter F is too high. It is more on the top than it should be. So I'm going to click on font and I can see here that the letters are high. So I'm going to move them not horizontally, but vertically. I'm going to move them down to the center and I'm going to click OK. Next preview. And now you see the letters are uh, in the center. So that is how you fix depending on what font you selected. It's not going to always be the same. So every font is going to have maybe different setups. And that is why you can use presets. So you see, I have preset for Anton font and ask why font. So I'm going to select that and you see now I'm going to click OK, next preview and see this is my uh, preset for this font. Dictionary order, I cannot show you this now because this is only visible once you export the actual puzzle. So this is the alignment of the word list. But here, this is only alignment of 
the word list within the box of the word list. So this is what was confusing me. I thought that this is also connected with the actual puzzle image, but it is not. It is there in that uh, time saver setup. And statistics here, this is where you can see uh, the total amount of squares, total words used, uh, the length of all the words and the longest word length. And you have here uh, puzzle statistics uh, data. So that is under statistics. Output settings, instant puzzle book. So page layout, what I showed you here. So I already shown you this. You can easily set this up. Time saver, this is important. Middle and upper left so middle and upper left this is my recommendation for pdf and powerpoint but you can play around with these settings as well so here you see batch creation i never use batch creation so i do not have any of the presets set here but once you save one preset here second it's going to be here it's going to be saved here but let's go back to the puzzle settings because i want to show you the mask feature so click on use mask set mask and I'm going to start with both and let's load preset. So this is both and I'm going to click now use mask. And now I get word search puzzle. Let me switch to Arial so you can enjoy your fonts. Arial, okay. Next preview. Okay, so this is a masked puzzle. So this is how the puzzle is going to look like. This is how the puzzle is going to export. The reason why this area is gray and this is white is because of here. You see canvas is white. If I click transparent, look what's going to happen. Focus on this one here. Next preview. You see now it is not gray. It is actually showing the background color. So now the puzzle is uh, transparent. So if I undo this, it's going to be white. So let's see. Let's try another one. Clover. Let's clover. So this is clover. Cross. So I have drawn a couple of presets. Let's try dog. Let's use dog. So this is a dog. Um, a dog uh, word shaped word search puzzle. If you want me, so if you want me to share this mask that I already have, but these are all PNG files. So you click here and select a PNG file. So click on anything. I don't know. Let's um, North America open. You see, and I have now North America and let's, I don't think I have it on the list. I didn't use North America so far. So North America save preset and now I have this so now I can even when I close the program completely I can still go back and use this one this is where I can see how image looks like so if you want me to share these presets I can I believe I have 20 50 100 something like that I don't know uh, if you want me to share these images that I'm using for these presets comment down below I can actually add them uh, somewhere in my Gumroad store for completely free. Let's try guitar. Guitar is also funny. You see, let's use this one. And now we have music. So it can be for a music word search uh, puzzle. What else? I have Easter. What was Easter? Oh, this one is, yeah, this one, this one is, yeah. Uh, this one was, this was done, this one was done manually. So you can also create uh, images manually. So let's create set mask. Let's clear this up. Okay. Uh, okay. So what just happened now is something that could happen to you. This image here that I created, it was created manually and it is quite large. So the grid is large. And because of that, the program crashed. So this is probably something that's not going to happen to you because you're not going to push this program to its limits. But this happens to me quite often because I'm pushing the program <laughs> to its limits. So if something like this happens, doesn't matter. Just quit, close the program and start the program again. So it's not a big issue. And that's it. 
If you have any questions, ask me down below. I hope uh, this make all everything about this software clearer than it was three hours ago. And uh, send me more questions if you have them. And I hope I answered all your questions that you sent me in this video. That's it. Uh, until next video, I'll see you down below in the comments. Stay safe, everybody. Take care. Bye.